Let's go! Now, if you're a diehard LSU football fan, you understand that the LSU offensive line has a lot of issues. And I'm very happy LSU brought in Brad Davis to fix it because he and Ed Orgeron have some big names to sort through after this Dare Rosenthal departure news. Now, Ed Orgeron said some very interesting things about who he thinks the top backups and the potential starter will be at left tackle. We'll get to that in a second. There is some important recruiting news we have to go through as well regarding the offensive line as Emory Jones and Kelvin Banks have provided some clarity as far as their recruitment is concerned. And the reason why what Ed Orgeron said was so interesting was he said the sixth guy on the LSU offensive line right now is Garrett Dellinger, a true freshman. Now, the definition of the sixth guy, uh, that is up for debate. However, uh, we'll get to that in a second. However, the big thing is that a true freshman on the LSU offensive line has a really good opportunity to get some playing time next season, which hopefully enamors the likes of Emory Jones and Kelvin Banks. Now, it is important to note that LSU, of course, has two offensive linemen committed already, both in the state of Louisiana, Will Campbell, a five-star, Bo Borderline, and LSU Legacy, a three-star. However, uh, the LSU offensive line recruiting has just got to get better in general. So obviously, LSU looking pretty good for 2022 right now, a top-four national class, uh, the number-one-ranked uh, school in the SEC. Obviously, it's very early, and LSU, of course, only has 11 commitments. But this is something very interesting I saw, and we've discussed this on live streams quite a bit. Uh, LSU in the state of Louisiana, they just don't produce a lot of linemen. And I saw this graph earlier from a guy on Twitter, Connor McAnalytics. I just love that name. Uh, he shared this graph that said Louisiana just doesn't produce as many offensive linemen as they do skill position players. Only Florida uh, is ahead of LSU, or I'd say LSU, is ahead of Louisiana in the percentage of skill position players uh, compared to overall recruits, which is very interesting, and it just makes a lot of sense. You look at the history of Louisiana, and linemen, compared to skilled guys, it's just really no comparison. And this cycle is no different LSU's got plenty of skilled guys to choose from. They just need more linemen, which makes Emory Jones that much more of a premium position, especially when you look at 2023. There aren't any offensive linemen even in the 247 composite in the state of Louisiana right now. Now, obviously, it's very early for 2023, but still, you see that the number of offensive linemen just normally aren't there, which is why for months, if you've been watching this channel... You've heard me say that Emory Jones was LSU's top uncommitted prospect because it depends on how you feel about recruiting. Things aren't looking too, too hot when it comes to out-of-state offensive linemen. But there is some good news. LSU sees that Kelvin Banks has decided to make his announcement on July 24th. Now, once again, recruits can decommit. Nothing is official until things are signed. But LSU, of course, got a visit out of Kelvin Banks. He has some Louisiana ties. But this is probably LSU's best shot of getting an out-of-state five-star offensive lineman this cycle. Now, you can always hope for Devon Campbell or Zach Rice, but this is it right here. And LSU's not had an out-of-state five-star offensive lineman since Maya Tawema in the mid-2010s. It was around 20... That was a 2015 pickup. So, yes, Kelvin Banks is obviously... Just a gigantic target for LSU. I see some people saying Texas and Florida are your leaders. Texas and Florida. Texas and Texas A&M are your leaders there. Obviously, you would prefer them to go to Texas instead of A&M. Um, but still, LSU really needs to get some of these out-of-state offensive linemen, even if it's not Kelvin Banks. Julian Armel is another name. Malik Agbo is another name. There's also some other dark horses that could be out there. But this looks like this could be it, which is good that Kelvin Banks is going to give us some clarity on July 24th. So obviously LSU is going to turn up the heat here. We'll see what happens. Um, but then we go back to Emory Jones, who said he's going to make his announcement before the beginning of the high school season. Now, Emory Jones has pushed back his announcement date before. 
We'll see what happens there. But look at some other offensive tackles. LSU was in the running for Ke- uh, Cam Dewberry. He did not list LSU in his top five, so that ship has probably sailed for the four-star at Texas. Before we get into this current offensive line, let me throw a few sleepers out there. And how about the two four-star offensive linemen our guy Brad Davis already had committed? And those two guys are Emerion Harris and Andrew Chambly. So, Mom L is right outside of Little Rock, so that's both in central Arkansas. It'd be a lot harder to potentially flip these guys if they were in northwest Arkansas, but, you know, Little Rock is still a good ways away from Baton Rouge, about a seven-hour drive, depending on where you go. So, yeah, that would be obviously a tough flip. I don't believe either one of them has LSU offers, but, you know, I, I obviously, if you're LSU right now, you would take any four-star offensive lineman considering how thin you are at the position, which obviously turns up the pressure even more on Emory Jones. Now, obviously, Fitzgerald West is a Louisiana defensive tackle that LSU has offered as an offensive lineman. Does he want to play offensive line at the next level? We don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's obviously a personal decision. One thing I found to be very interesting is that there was a Louisiana offensive tackle, Cam East, in the class of 2022 that just committed to Mississippi State. And Mississippi State, of course, picked up former LSU commit uh, Lucas Taylor as well. And uh, Cam was 6'7", 280. I know LSU wanted to see him camp just a little bit more, but Cam East went on ahead and committed. And he had offers for some pretty good schools such as Georgia. So... You know, you would hope LSU feels pretty confident about um, some of these other offensive tackles because by my estimation, it doesn't seem as if LSU offered uh, Cam East. So once again, I could be wrong about that. Offers uh, are are very, you know, informal. There's no official LSU ledger of scholarship offers. It is just kind of this verbal thing, but... You know, it, it is interesting that LSU didn't want to take, you know, a chance on Cam East. They must feel pretty good about some of these other offensive tackles. So, you know, obviously we'll see what happens. St. Aug, you know, a high school that has produced some of the most NFL players, including our guy Leonard Fournette. But, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what LSU does from here. One thing I think will be very interesting moving forward is the transfer portal. And the reason why I say that is because there's a guy such as, you know, Stacey Wilkins, who just decommitted from, uh, or he was at Oklahoma. His name is in the transfer portal. He's from Camden, Arkansas. So Southern Arkansas, a little bit closer to Baton Rouge, uh, about the same from Baton Rouge to Fayetteville. Uh, And of course, Wilkins was probably recruited by Brad Davis when, of course, Brad Davis was in the Arkansas-Missouri region because he's recruiting that region and he's recruiting, obviously, uh, offensive linemen. You know, maybe that would be someone LSU could go after if they had one final slot remaining. So what I think might happen moving forward, and it's just an idea for LSU moving forward, keep one slot open. So yes, Brad Davis and Ed Orgeron, they have a lot of things to sort through. Obviously, once again, Ed Orgeron to off the bench. Uh, He said Cam Wire is a guy at left tackle. Now, you know, before we get into this with Cam Wire, I do have to shout out his mother who watches the channel, who showed some love to us. And, you know, I, I have to say this, and I'm not just saying that because some of Wire's family watches our channel. Uh, I, I've been preaching Cam Wire's praises for quite some time to the point where I have said on live streams repeatedly, I think Cam Wire would be better at right guard than Hines, and I think it would be better at right tackle than Deculus. That's how good I think he is. And, you know, now he gets his opportunity to start at left tackle. So, what I'm about to say is not anything against Cam Wire, but he was so valuable to LSU as a backup. Remember, we tend to think of offensive linemen as just five guys and that they never come out of the game, which is very true. But over the course of the season, offensive linemen get banged up. They're big bodied. And look, when you play that many snaps in a row and you never come out, it it really puts wear and tear on your body. Take a look at 2019, that LSU offensive line that won the Joe Moore Award. 
they had a lot of people banged up uh, after the Alabama game. They had Triori stepping at right tackle for Deculus, and then Ed Ingram was a very valuable backup. So, you know, you got to have seven to eight guys total. That 2011 group had obviously that great group uh, with Will Blackwell and T-Bob. They had a lot of backups there as well. And that's why, you know, you got to have numbers on the LSU offensive line, which leads us to this question. You know, obviously, Dare Rosenthal, at the time of this recording, has not picked a new team yet. Does LSU actually pursue Dare Rosenthal to come back? Because, of course, the transfer portal is not official unless, of course, you sign with a new university. And then, you know, you know as of right now, it looks as if Dare Rosenthal is not going to be with the team. And this LSU offensive line is going to have a big numbers issue on their hands. Now, obviously, Garrett Dellinger got a lot of love this morning, and rightfully so. He is a four-star prospect for a reason, but we'll see. I mean, we'll see if he's going to be ready to go going into this next season. And then it gets into the James Craig development issue Well, you know, if Garrett has jumped all these guys, what's happened to Doomerville? What's happened to Xavier Hill and Marlon Martinez and some of these other guys that are older? Obviously, Cardell Thomas, he released a very interesting statement uh, yesterday. And and the timing of it was very interesting considering the Dare Rosenthal news had just broken. A few hours later, Cardell released a statement saying that he's looking for potential sponsorship opportunities with the new NIL. He is the first college athlete. I think I've even seen uh, put out a public response such as this. You know, heck, maybe I maybe I sponsor Cardell. I don't know. But it would be nice to see Cardell get on the actual field this next season and get to where he can be a potential contributor and backup to LSU. If you're watching this on a premiere, we're getting ready to fire up a live stream at 7 Central, but as always, Tuesday, Saturday, 7 p.m. Central, that is our live stream schedule. There's some other great content floating in your face, and boom! It is Power Hour LSU. Boom! I think we're doing garlic parm salmon tonight. Let's go!